Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Hidden in the heart of Melbourne's latte society lives a secret religious sect. An ancient Jewish community whose traditions date back to biblical times. Just because the world has changed, we haven't changed. Its followers are ultra-Orthodox, ultra-insular and ultra-strict. Not just in their dress code, but in every facet of their daily lives. <laughs> to outsiders, their ancient rituals may appear strange, but these strict religious practices dictate their daily lives. Five seconds left. And are at the epicenter of their faith. <laughs> Steeped in piety and prayer, <laughs> they're proudly self-sufficient. Strictly segregated by sex, they marry within and for the most part shun the trappings of the modern world. No devices in this house except for my telephone, nothing. Like a community lost in time, their strictly Jewish world revolves around their sacred synagogue. Their clothing may be weird, but we don't think we're, we're mad at all. Now, for the first time, Television cameras have been allowed inside this closely guarded sect. Don't film this, this is embarrassing. But not everyone is happy about it. Welcome to the secret world of Australia's Adas Israel community. the road and there was a punk on the other side of the road with a mohawk and he calls out from the other side of the road hey dude where'd you get your hairstyle and I said no no this is a hat and he was like got the shock and he was like wow <laughs> I need to get one of those what's with a hat have you seen any movies in the 50s and 60s everyone's wearing a hat we haven't changed if someone landed in Ripponlea, I often wonder what they would think seeing the garb, which probably stands out the most within our community of the men. But then I think, hello, I can go into town and see some very weird things that uh, don't exactly explain themselves either. Aria, Razel and Shlomo are all members of Adas Israel the most ultra-Orthodox Jewish sect in Australia. Over the next Jewish calendar year, they will open doors into their homes and lives as they follow the 613 Jewish laws, the foundations of their faith. Even though we don't have televisions in our home, just as I'm interested in other cultures, I'd expect that other cultures are interested in what we do. Around 2,000 strong and growing, ADAS members live in the Melbourne suburb of Ripon Lee, near Trendy St Kilda. Outwardly, they're easily recognised by their furry hats, known as strimals, white stockings and long black coats that can be traced back to 19th century Europe. But the inner world of this secret sect has always been a mystery, until now. Shlomo the Elder, a retired importer, will never retire from his strictly Jewish way of life. This is all about the laws of men and women getting married. Born and bred into a das, if you like, I'll make it kosher. He knows virtually everyone in the community. Every 
everyone looks after everybody else. And uh, yes, a little bit they stick their nose in other people's business too, because everybody is virtually related to everyone by now. This is a community directory, telephones, addresses, emails of everyone in the community. But Shlomo doesn't need the directory to find his way around. In this one square kilometre block, ADAS members have recreated the lost world of their European Jewish shtetls, or villages. A circumcision to grave community that's virtually self-sufficient. How's Yom Tov? Not bad. This is the local shopping centre, Ripper Lee. These are our neighbours who all come down to the famous coffee shops over here. Here we have Joe, the barber. He's Italian, but he's been the Jewish barber for 44 years. Started here when I was only 20. And uh, I must admit, I've, I think the Jewish community adopted me like one of their own. Honorary Jew, right, Joe? This is the famous Yumi's fish shop. How are you? This is where the Yumi dip empire began. Uh, the most popular product is hummus. And turned it today to a almost multinational. Across the road, it's Hey, what's happening? We have uh, Eschel, which is famous caterers, a Razel Fogel, a Yankel Fogel. Because it's one stop shopping, we have a section of groceries. Like Shlomo, Razel was also born into the Adas community. While she runs the deli with her husband, she's first and foremost the matriarch of her ever expanding tribe. We have 37 grandchildren and one great grandchild. Love you. It's so sweet. I don't think there's a, a human way to describe the joy, the pleasure, sense of loving and belonging when you have grandchildren. You know, they'll drop in on the morning on their way to creche, and you hear them coming in, they're going, Bubby, Bubby. They call me Bubby, which is Jewish for grandmother. Sometimes I'll just hold them and their hearts are racing because they know they're always going to get this huge welcome idea? and they're just the best part of our lives. As the children grew up and I had more time on my hands, I became a doula. A doula supports women in childbirth. This is one of the little babies I doulaed and I call them all my babies. At least 200 I've done, but I haven't got a full count, unfortunately, because I didn't keep records when I first started. Unlike Razel and Shlomo, Arie was not born into the secret world of Adas. Okay, let's go. He's a rare exception. Born a secular Jew, Arie spent his first decade living a dinky die Aussie life, 25 kilometres away from the Adas community. My parents bought a house out in Greensboro, no Jewish community there, and they enrolled me in the local kindergarten over there. And at the end of the year party, I played the role of, uh, of Jesus. One night during the Festival of Lights of Hanukkah, they were lighting the candles, and I was singing jingle bells, and then they decided there's a bit of a conflict over here, and that they wanted to provide me with a Jewish education and back into the community. It was really a moment of truth. I was 19 years old, and I decided that moment that, yes, I actually want to pursue this way of life, that I wanted to become a rabbi, that I wanted to teach, and that I wanted to live a committed, pure Jewish life. For Arie, Shlomo and Razel, living a committed Jewish life means absolute adherence to Jewish law, which they practice more stringently than other Australian Jewish sects. We have 613 commandments in the Torah and there's special laws for men and they're not relevant to me. But on an average day, I keep kosher, I pray, I don't cheat, I don't lie. That's just the start. To be a religious Jew, it's something which keeps you busy 24 hours a day. 
248 proactive mitzvot, deeds that we need to do, actively do. Then there are 365 mitzvot, lotase, things that we're not allowed to do. As a rabbi, part of Arya's job is to teach the 613 commandments to the next generation. Okay, the purpose of the 613 mitzvot are to enable you to connect to God. Our culture, our Torah, which is the Bible we live by, hasn't changed. Nothing's going to change that. The man who oversees the community's strict adherence to these commandments is the Adash chief rabbi, Abraham Beck. An 83-year-old who survived the Holocaust. He's in charge of the school, our synagogue. He's in charge of all the kosher stuff. Like an archbishop or grand mufti, Rabbi Beck is the ultimate authority. He's a very highly respected man. Some would say a holy man. He's the one who has the official and the final say on matters of halakha, of Jewish law. It's September and Arie is preparing for Sukkot, the first festival of the Jewish year. The Jewish world follows the lunar calendar, hence New Year begins in September. Sukkot relives the time when the Jews wandered through the Sinai Desert more than 3,000 years ago. Sukkot is called Zman Simchatena, which is the time of our intense joy. And the reason for that is, is because we leave all the materialistic world behind. Arya is building a sukkah, a temporary dwelling in his garage, to recall how the Jews lived at that time. You're meant to sleep in here, eat in here, do everything that you'd normally do at home, you're meant to do in the sukkah. We like to beautify it as best that we can, to show God that His commandments are not for us a burden, it's not difficult for us, we love doing them. With the hard yakka complete, Arya now needs an ancient fruit for a ceremony, central to the Hi. festival. Hi, who's this? For my son, Shimmy. It may look like a lemon, but this is no ordinary lemon. It's a citrus grown in Israel that can cost up to $150. I like, I like that one. Yes, this is the traditional Israeli one. It's a very nice etrog. The etrog is one element of a ceremony that replicates the service in the ancient Jewish temple in Jerusalem. I think I'll take this one. It's beautiful. This ritual also dates back to biblical times. Ari is following the letter of the law by eating meals and celebrating in his sukkah. He also takes the commandment to dwell in his booth, literally. So, we've got the camping bed here. But there are two problems. The first is street noise. Yeah. The second is native wildlife. Now, I sleep with the lights on because that keeps the possums away. So I don't want any possums in here with me. Orthodox Jews all build a sukkah, but unlike Arya, not all of them actually sleep in them. Put on the face mask to keep nice and dark throughout the night, and I'll be seeing you in the morning. Beautiful. Ah. Exposure to the outside world is a serious challenge to Odessa's insular way of life. So much so that some do not use the internet at all. Sometimes I do it daily, sometimes I only do it once or twice a week. Shlomo is busy preparing one of his regular newsletters, harnessing the power of the internet. He's become Adassa's unofficial multimedia guru. I send them off in one email to a thousand people or so. Women and girl haircuts, $20. 
Here's somebody imports Marks and Spencer shirts, Yamulkas. Shlomo filters news from the outside world, ensuring nothing taboo gets through to this ultra conservative community. Okay, well, it's all ready to go. I'm going to press the send button and off it goes. And without having the, a computer or having email or internet, I couldn't do it. The computer is such a big part of most people's lives, particularly in business, but we do have filters. Technology poses a big challenge to our community. Yeah, yeah. Part of living a Hasidic Jewish life, Kedusha or sanctity is paramount. Violence, pornography, these things can have a very detrimental effect on a person's spiritual growth. The risk of spiritual contamination is even greater with mobile phones. Adas is the only Jewish sect to actually police content. I need my phone for the internet. Yes. I have to have it because I run my business when I'm out of the business. Many Adas members don't have a smartphone, but Razel does. I tag the stuff I don't need, but keep the stuff that I really need for day-to-day -day living. Checkups by the community's technical wizard ensure her filters keep non-kosher content at bay. And what about all the apps? That well, let's say my kids want to go into um, Noddy or Thomas the Tank or something like that, and their yeah. parents don't want them to be able to access that. Yeah, so if that I could... That's the kind of thing that I need blocked. Their parents would rather they play and kick a ball outside. OK, all done? All good? Fabulous, thank you okay. very much. Much Good obliged. Night. OK, I'll call you if I've got any problems. OK, no worries, Thanks thank you. Thanks for coming. Good night. But modern technology has its advantages. A smartphone was used to film this shocking assault on Adas members and instantly went viral. Good evening. Alarming video has captured a reservoir man's nasty racist attack on the steps of a Melbourne synagogue. Get the hell off there! What's going on? Yeah, come, come, What's going talk on? nicely. What's going on? Come and talk nicely. nicely. That is not the You will shut your face! Hey. Uh, One! Get him on the floor! Two! Relax, mate. I'm from... Go back to Israel! You're not original. <laughs> hey! Yes. Do you want a sweet Allah? One Adas member is forced into self-defence. I'm also... I like I really Who would start with... You know, with 50 people around you, you'd have to be stupid. For Shlomo, this type of incident is neither new nor surprising. Walking home last Friday night with my wife and some friends, a car, suddenly we hear them yelling and cursing and, whoops, an egg. We prefer eggs to the bottles they used to throw, you know? The scourge of anti-Semitism has left a deep hole in this ultra-Orthodox sect with most families barely surviving the Holocaust. When I went to school here in Odessa, we didn't know what a grandparent was. Hitler killed them all. <laughs> most Odess members descend from Hungary and the former Czechoslovakia, where more than half a million Jews were exterminated by the Nazis. The first Holocaust survivors landed in Melbourne in the late 1940s. Odessa means a community of Israel. It was about 50, 60 families originally. Then families kept on coming out from Europe. Everyone was working towards that idea that we have a, a kahila, a community, exactly as it was in Europe. I've grown up here my whole life. My father was here, my children here, my grandchildren. Adas members rebuilt their old world in a new land, retaining their strict religious beliefs, even bringing their own language in their luggage. Yiddish, a mixture of Hebrew and German. They can install zog and cook. This is your learn hand. It is my best helper, Emma's. Adas have their own schools and are the only Orthodox Jews in Australia who actually teach in Yiddish. They teach everything in Yiddish except for the secular studies. Hello, man. December, and after a busy week, Melbourne's strictly orthodox Adas are preparing for their holy day of rest, the Sabbath. The tradition is to have 
two chalot on the Sabbath. Very tasty. We just love it. We look forward to it every week. Delicious. One poppy seed colour. As the sun sets on Friday, the street empties and the shops close. Razel's busy cooking up a traditional Jewish feast. Boiled fish, filter fish, fried fish, chicken, chicken soup, the, all the normals. Nice ice creams I've made, nice desserts, side dishes, salads. Come on. Leave plastic on the whole table. The Sabbath must be welcomed like a bride. And like everything in Adas, its members take this tradition to the extreme. I'm going to use the smaller plates this time. Being Orthodox and Jewish means that we don't travel on Shabbos. Our Sabbath starts Friday from sunset to Saturday night sunset. We don't use the phone, we don't use our cars, we don't switch on lights on and off, we don't use anything electrical like email, iPod, iPad, music. It's really shut down time. It's just like nothing else exists, just your family and the Sabbath. As the Sabbath approaches, Razel's grandchildren deliver the special bread. Over at Aria's house, his wife Shoshi is readying for the self-imposed power outage as soon as the sun sets. I'm putting the food on a hot plate because we can't cook on Sabbath, so the hot plate keeps it hot. In Jewish households, women hold the honour of heralding in the Sabbath with the customary lighting of the candles. It's just such a good wind down time. Going to bed on a Friday night, knowing you don't have to get up to work early Saturday morning and knowing that you've got the whole day to just chill out and be with your loved ones, it's magic. On the Sabbath, the holiest day of the week, driving is not permitted. While the Sabbath laws are sacrosanct, they can be broken if it's a matter of life and death. Yumi the fishmonger was one of the founders of Adassa's unique paramedic service. We're sitting in the synagogue in Shul and someone collapsed and we couldn't save his life. They looked overseas to a Jewish life-saving organisation. We decided that uh, if there's a tool in New York, why don't we make one in Australia? So even in the Day of Atonement, if you save someone's life, it doesn't matter where it is, like you save the whole world. Here we go. Unit 70, you want air? Yeah, no worries about that. I'll be there in a couple of minutes. That was headquarters. I've got to go. These fully trained ultra-Orthodox paramedics demonstrate the Adas community's trademark self-sufficiency. Saving a life is like you save like a whole world. It doesn't matter which life it is, if it's Jewish or non-Jewish, saving someone's life is a great reward. In almost 20 years, Hatsola has grown from serving Adas to the wider Jewish and non-Jewish communities. It's even won plaudits from the highest office in the land. February and business as usual on Ripon Lee's High Street as shops run by Adas members serve their community. Yumi began his working life with a modest fish shop. Most fish are kosher. Today, he and his brother Michael run Yumi's, the most famous export to emerge from the Adas community. Yumi's dips and spreads line supermarket shelves across Australia. Not bad for a family startup catering to an ultra kosher community. Everything that we make is kosher, but we, we manufacture to fit the Australian market. Kosher means food that's fit for consumption according to Jewish law. It's supervised by a rabbinical authority to ensure that it's not being contaminated by forbidden ingredients, like pigs and prawns. 
Because Adas has very strict standards, it has its own kosher authority under Chief Rabbi Beck. Yumi's non-Jewish staff must dress to adhere to the Jewish laws of modesty. Women especially should be covered to elbows, no cleavage to be highly exposed, no short dresses above the knees, and we don't shake hands with Michael or Yumi. This complies with the ADAS dress code for women who wear stockings and long skirts, never trousers or jeans, and must cover their hair like razor with a headscarf or a wig known as a shadle. Our dress code is pretty much one of modesty. We keep our hair covered. Our clothes are not too tight, not too short, not too exposing of our private bodies. We feel our bodies are something that are very special and doesn't need to be out there. We like to dress well, we like to look good, we like to be up to date with our clothes, but they're always under the umbrella of being very modest. For 364 days a year, Adas Jews dress modestly in black and white. But for one day in March, they burst into colour for the festival of Purim. Welcome to our street, welcome to Purim. It's nice to have you here. All the best. Purim celebrates the Jewish people's survival against their enemy in ancient Persia. Today's commandment is be joyous at having survived. Lomo the Elder is hosting a Purim party. Uh, hi, I'm from yes. Purim. So Masks nice. are popular. It's so beautiful. Fancy dress is customary too. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. As are gifts of alcohol to drink and be merry. Oh, this is amazing. Homemade liqueur. Wow. It's Purim today. And everybody's bringing shalach monas, which is gifts of food and things like that. And the kids are getting presents, and everyone's dressed up. That's how we celebrate the whole um, uh, Jews all over the world today. Can I have my glasses? <laughs> I've just received a text that the police are patrolling the area here. So I'm sending out a, a WhatsApp to the community, warning them that they should make sure the kids are all got their seat belts on and that they're not drunk. The only thing taken seriously on Purim is the commandment to give to charity. Adas members raise tens of thousands of dollars for the poor and needy here and in Israel. process of koshering the sink and the kitchen for Passover. It's April and Aria is preparing for the eight-day festival of Passover. Time to get rid of everything with yeast in it. The process of that is using heat source to remove whatever's been absorbed into the actual surface. And the laws of Passover, the dietary laws of Passover, are very strict. This law dates back to the Israelites' exodus from Egypt. They fled before their bread had risen and survived on the unleavened dough they took with them. The kosher supermarket can't sell anything with yeast in it. Uh, Eddie, you've got to come, we've got to cover up all the chumats now. It rules our beer, pasta and a host of other goodies. Bread is obviously out. In its place, matzah, a yeast-free cracker, is in. And what's a shahakal matzah? Shahakal is gluten-free matzah. Gluten-free, colour-free and taste-free. Yes. Adas members are ultra-vigilant. On the eve of Passover, homes are rigorously inspected. Aria scours every nook and cranny for the smallest breadcrumb using some high-tech equipment.
A ritual burning of offending particles completes the process. And then we make a declaration that whatever we haven't burnt should be null and void like the dust of the earth. Just hours before Passover begins, and it's time to make the matzah crackers, the festival's staple food. But not any matzah will do for Adas members. They're the only sect in Australia to bake their own. It's 18 minutes from when the water touches the flour till it gets into the oven. And they've got now three minutes and five seconds left. Adas chief Rabbi Beck inspects the special bake-off as four production lines work frantically to meet the 18-minute sprint to the kosher deadline. With the process complete, the community is ready for the eight-day festival that celebrates their liberation from slavery in Egypt. For a community almost wiped out in the Holocaust, family is at the core of Adas life. One of our principal beliefs is to be fruitful and multiply. Our dust families are generally large. Two, three is considered a really small family. And we've got, if I'm correct, 18 and 19, and even we've got one twentieth. I have five children. My oldest daughter is 15. Wow, so confident. And my youngest daughter is four. A daughter at 11 and another daughter at 9. I have a son at 14 years old. That one son is forever hopeful. Aria's children, like all Adas kids, have little contact with outsiders, even other Jews. Boys and girls are strictly segregated from kindergarten onwards. The Adas Boys and Girls Schools have their own curriculum and they don't go past Year 10 for boys, so university is off the agenda. They might be able to read, they might be able to write, they'll know a little bit about geography, a bit about history, but they don't actually have a career in the making. People need to earn a living, they need to be able to work and engage in their world. But with that, they will never be at the compromise of Jewish law. Study of the Torah takes top priority for the boys, and for the girls, marriage and children. For the girls, they have a seminary where they are basically taught life skills, cooking and teaching skills. They definitely don't get a VCE. I actually feel like a queen being a Jewish mother. I love my role. It's very fulfilling. I love giving to my children. I love making a nice meal for my husband. I love keeping my home nice. It's, it's wonderful. Adas boys finish school at 16 and go on to advanced Jewish studies in Israel, the US or elsewhere. Until they're married off. We have six children who have all had arranged marriages and they seem to be very happy together. We do tend to marry off our children young. That's sort of the part of the culture. They don't mix with boys and girls, so it's pretty much a pre-arranged marriage. They get to meet, they get to see if they like each other, and anything more than that, anything more intimate, is left till after marriage. It's June and Arie has been invited to Jerusalem for the wedding of the decade in the Jewish world's ultra-Orthodox community. He knows the Holy Land well. He studied here after his religious epiphany in his late teens. First stop is the Kotel, or Western Wall. It's the last remnant that we have of the Holy Temple from biblical times and it is the most 
precious and holy place for Jews. <laughs> Ariel's prayers have added importance today. We're expecting a child, so it's really something quite special to come here and ask that it should all go well. We will have a custom to put a note into the wall, a prayer to God, and asking that their prayers should be answered. The big wedding demands a new big hat, the trademark Strymon. The seller is Australian, a fellow Adas member from Melbourne, who now calls Jerusalem home. This is actually what they're made from. This is from Sable. It's a family of a fox, but it's like between a beaver and a fox. So now this is a, you see, taller, higher, lighter colour. Right. This is more of an up-to-date strain. What makes it more up-to-date? You're, you're going to wear it, you look like a soda water bottle with a little thing on top because it's, you see, it's not your size, it's small. That's right, soda water bottle, right? Yeah. So like that one that we just saw now, um, it's like $900. Right. And you have to remember, whenever you take it off your head, it's or on your head or in the box. Straight and a little turn. Once it's in, you always give it another turn. When I see a punk or a Hare Krishna walking around, I guess I look at him the same way he looks at me. But uh, if he believes what he's doing and he knows what he's doing, he's doing it for a good reason, and I respect him. On Arie's second day in Israel, he's visiting a place he knows well, the Bell's Great Synagogue, believed to be the largest in the world. Opened over 15 years ago, it seats about 10,000, and it's where Arie studied when he became Orthodox. When I walked into the synagogue at Bells, when I saw the Rebbe for the first time, I just felt this is where I belong. Outside the synagogue, preparations are underway for the big wedding. In his new hat and festive garb, Shalom. Arie will join some 20,000 ultra-Orthodox Jews from around the world to witness this historic event. I can feel my heart beating in my chest from excitement. Whenever I make this left-hand turn and we see the synagogue here just coming up, so we see just the tops of the synagogue here. It's always such a feeling of such holiness. Women are segregated from the men according to strict orthodox rules. The wedding is the hottest ticket in town. We're getting ready to welcome the group in preparation for the wedding. It's like a pre-wedding. The groom is the grandson of the synagogue's chief rabbi. It's like a supersized stag night in a sold-out stadium. There's excitement in the air, there's a buzz in the air. This is a great celebration. It's, it's organised chaos. Time for the ultra-orthodox equivalent of a royal wedding. It's a sea of strimals. The crowd swells around the wedding canopy to catch a glimpse of the bride and groom.
the marriage ensures the survival of a renowned rabbinic dynasty and strengthens the revival of this reclusive sect. As soon as the knot is tied, Arie is at the center of a street party like no other. It's been an incredible evening of celebration, of joyous, holy dancing, and I'm exhausted and ready to go to bed. It's Arie's final day in Israel. His return to the Holy Land has touched the core of his beliefs. A mystics teach us that crying is the perspiration of the soul. <laughs> I was in my soul was... My tears are joined in with the tears of my forefathers and their parents, and they're all the way back, all their way back to Abraham, all the way back. In Melbourne, the ultra-Orthodox Adas will soon welcome a new baby. Arie's wife is entering her final trimester. Razel, the community's doula, is on her way to see her. We're going to make an antenatal visit to Shoshi Goldman. She's due to have a baby. I like to go and check on the mum's pre-birth, make sure everything's OK. Hi. Hi, Reza. How are you? How are you feeling? Thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. Thank you. So how's it going, Shoshi? How's the last couple of weeks? This is the home stretch, hey? <laughs> Hard. Just Feeling finished work today, so... Oh, that's great. So you must feel yeah. relieved about yeah. that. Shoshi is well advanced into her pregnancy. Just a few details As it will be her right. sixth child, she's taking it all in her stride. I'll just explain to you a little bit about my role. I don't have any medical training whatsoever. I'm not medically trained. I'm purely your support person who is there for you as a doula and trying to keep you as comfortable as possible. I do a lot of massage, a lot of water work. OK, look after yourself. We'll be in touch. Remember, to, um, remember, you've got my number, and if you need anything, I'm here. Thank you. OK, be well. See Take you. care. Bye. It's September, and 12 months have passed in the life of Adas Israel. Arya is signalling the start of the Jewish New Year. So this is a ram's horn, it's called a shofar in Hebrew. And on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, this is the main, one of the main commandments that we have is to hear the hundred sounds that come out of this shofar. The new year calls for a new outfit. Everybody puts on, it's called a white kittel, a white gown. Normally we wear black, here we wear the white. The white symbolizes purity. But the purity of New Year is marred by scandal. The day after the festival, Adas is making headlines. An Orthodox Jewish school in Elstonwick has been ordered to pay more than $1 million to a former student sexually abused by a former headmistress. Malka Leifer was hired from Israel but fled when the allegations surfaced. While Malka Leifer fights extradition proceedings, the scandal is an extremely touchy subject for Adas. We got rid of it. Unlike a lot of the other schools, they knew they had abusers there for 20 and 30 years and did nothing about it. The second we found out about it, we got rid of it. Whatever way we got rid of it, it was correct or not so correct, but we got away from the kids. We didn't want her in the community trying to you know, abuse any more kids. The impact of the scandal is heightened by the timing of the news during the 10 holy days that lead into Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. As is customary at this time of year, 
Razor visits the community's private cemetery. It's common that we visit during the high holy days in the lead up to Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. My dad was one of the first to be buried here. He died many years ago, almost 50 years now. And when I arrive at his grave site, I put a little stone on as a recognition that he had a visitor. We don't bring flowers. That's not a, in the Jewish tradition to do that. We believe when we come to visit the deceased that they are arbitrators for us up high and we'll always say some prayers and if we've got something personal we'd like to ask, we feel that's heard and listened to and, and will be answered in good time. These little attachments to the actual grave, they're often for people who died in the Holocaust and they're the people who died have no grave. On the eve of Yom Kippur, the holiest day in the Jewish calendar, Arya and his family have come to their local beach for a unique act of confession. We cast away all of our sins, figuratively speaking, into the sea. Throughout the year, as a human, we make mistakes. Yom Kippur, for me personally, the Day of Atonement, is a day where I can achieve some form of purification. To focus on repentance on Yom Kippur, Jews fast for 25 hours. Like other Orthodox Jews, Adas members go one step further. They cleanse their minds, waving money over their heads to symbolically atone for their sins. I'll give one for each member of the family and for my wife, we'll actually do two since she's expecting. The head is the area where the person made the mistake. This all goes to charity. This Jewish New Year has delivered the ultimate blessing for Arye and his wife Shoshi. It's a boy, we have a boy. The baby is now not even 24 hours old. He's so cute. We have a commandment to bring children into the world and every child that we merit to bring into the world is another link in the chain in the Jewish community. I can't tell you what the baby's name is because on the eighth day we have the circumcision and then we give the baby its name. Razel, the community doula, stops by to check in on Arie's wife and the new baby. Hello, everybody. Mazel nice tov. <laughs> A little boy. He's beautiful, absolutely perfect. You're very blessed. That's your time now. You spoil yourself. You've done all the hard work. If you need me, I'm around. Bye. In the Adas synagogue, just eight days after the birth, it's the circumcision of Arye's son, and the community is invited. As is custom, Arye's father brings the baby in. The ritual cut is performed by a man specially trained in this most sacred of Jewish rites. <laughs> The circumcision is the covenant, physically binding the Jewish child to God. <laughs> Chief Rabbi Beck is given the honour of announcing the boy's name for the first time. We named him Akiva Dovber. He's named after the great sage in Jewish history. His story has been always so inspirational in my own journey. Just like Arie, the great sage, Rabbi Akiva, only dedicated himself to the Torah later in life. I feel deep gratitude to God 
for giving me this blessing of a son to raise him in the ways of our forefathers. Aria's son represents the next generation of this booming subculture, a community reborn from the ashes of Auschwitz and now more than 2,000 strong, tucked away alongside multicultural Melbourne's latte society. We feel very privileged to bring a child into the world here in Australia where we can raise him consistent with our traditions and our beliefs and our faith. Everything in the Jewish religion is important. Everything. Sticking with tradition, staying with tradition, you're not searching for new ideas. Shalom Aleichem, Modern, new ways, haven't got a lot going for it, as far as I can tell. I'm just very indebted that I was born in this country and able to be who I am. The actual essence of us has not changed in all the past years and hopefully will not change in all the years to come. Amile Dodi, Amile Dodi.